Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to write if else statements in Viper. I'm also going to show you for loops. And lastly I'm going to show you how to use break, continue and pass. So let's start off with if else statements. How do you write them? We'll write a function so I'll declare this as external and then peer and the name of the function I'll name it if else it will take in a uint 256 I'll name this input i up type uint 256 and for the output we'll return a uint 256 as well now to write a if else statement it's pretty simple you just write if and then type in the condition so for example if i is less than 10 colon we'll return zero else if is a little bit tricky and we'll have to say l if and we'll say else if i is less than 20 then we'll return one else we'll return two all right so that's how you write a if else statement in viper and this is very similar to how you would write in python the one thing that always gets me is that else if you write l if instead of else if so next i want to show you several examples of for loop in viper i'll show you an example of how to loop through array the rows and then state variables, and then lastly, we'll talk about how to loop the range. Over here, I've declared a function named for loop, and we'll be writing our examples inside here. Let's see an example of how to loop the array the rows. First of all, let's say that we have an array the row of one, two, three. How do we write a loop for this? Well, you do it like this. You would say for i in, in the array the row, semicolon, and you will write your code inside here. And for this example, I'll add all of the array elements. So first we'll declare a local variable x of type uint256. And we'll initialize the value to zero. Inside the for loop, we'll add the elements of the array to x by saying x plus equals i. Now this code will not compile since Viper does not know the type of i. Viper doesn't know whether the type of i is a uint 256 or a uint 8 or a int 256 and so on. So over here we'll explicitly have to say what the type of i is by saying convert i to type uint 256. So this is an example of looping through array the rows. Let's return x as an output and make sure that x is equal to the sum of 1, 2, and 3. So we'll do that by saying over here, arrow parentheses uint256. And this will tell Viper that this function is going to return one output of type uint256. And inside the function, we'll return x. I've opened Remix and we'll first activate the Viper plugin. Once the Viper plugin is activated, you'll see a Viper icon over here on the left. So we'll create a Viper file. We'll name this controlflow.by. Copy the code and then paste it into Remix. Then we'll compile it. and then deploy it using Remix. So let's see an example of this for loop. The output should be equal to the sum of one, two, three, which is equal to six. And it is. The next example that I'm gonna show you is how to loop through state variables. So back at top, we'll declare a nums state variable and it will be of type uint256, an array of uint256 
with at most three elements. And we'll put some values into this state variable nums inside the constructor by saying self.nums of zero is equal to one, self.nums at one is equal to two, and self.nums at two is equal to three. So over here, we initialize nums to equal one, two, three. All right, so let's now loop through this nums state variable. So I'm gonna scroll down, and for this example, I'll create another local variable, y of uint 256, and initialize to zero. And we can loop through a state variable, in this case, an array of uint 256 by saying four, and then we assign a name to the array element that we're looping. Here, I'll name it i again, in self.nums, colon. And like the previous example, we will just add the elements of nums to y by saying y plus equals i. Notice that over here, we don't have to explicitly say convert. And this is because we declare the nums to be an array of un256. So Viper knows that i is of type un256. Let's go back to Remix and see what the value of y is. But first, we'll have to return y. So over here, I'll say uint256. And back inside the function body, we'll return x and y. And lastly, since we're accessing a state variable now, this function declaration has to be redeclared to be view. So I'm going to copy this code, paste it into Remix, and then I'll recompile the code. And then redeploy the contract. So recall that self.nums is initialized to equal an array of 1, 2, 3. So the value of y should be the sum of 1, 2, 3 which is equal to 6. And that's the value that you see here. Next, I'm going to show you how to write a for loop using range. And again, for this example, we'll first initialize a uint. We'll name it z, type uint256, and we'll initialize it for 0 for simplicity. And we'll start the loop by saying for i n now, unlike the previous two examples, here we're not looping through an array. We're going to use range, and we'll loop it for 10 times by saying range 10, and then semicolon. I want to find out how many times this loop is going to run, so we'll say z incremented by 1 every time the loop runs. Let's see how many times the loop runs when we say range 10. Does it iterate it 10 times or does it iterate it less than 10 times? We'll see. So uh, first we'll return z, which holds the number of times the for loop ran over here. And then in the function signature, we'll return that count. And I'm going to copy this code again, repaste it in Remix, remove the deployed contract, recompile it, and redeploy the contract. Then I'm going to execute for loop. So how many times did this loop run? Well, over here we get the output of 10. Which means that when we call range 10, it runs the loop 10 times. So over here, if you say range 11, then this loop will run 11 times. For the last example of for loop, I'll show you a variation of using range. So over here, we specify the range by passing in a single number. But as the name suggests range, you can pass in a range of numbers. What do I mean by this? Well, let's see an example. So to start off with, I'll copy this code, paste it in here, and we'll rename the variable to w. And we'll run the range from 1 
to 10. We will assign w to the last value of the for loop by saying w is equal to i. Now here again, we'll have to be explicit about the type of i. So we'll say convert i to uint 256. And then we'll return w as an output and then update the function signature. I'll copy this code again. So I recompiled and redeployed our example contract. Let's see what the value of w is when we call the function for loop. And it is equal to 9. So this means that when we do a for loop from range from 1 to 10, then the value of i will be from 1 to 9. So 10 is not included in the loop. Next, I'm going to show you an example of break and continue. For those of you who know JavaScript, then you already know what break and continue does. You use break inside the for loop, and it breaks out of the for loop. In other words, it exits the for loop. On the other hand, continue tells the for loop to skip that iteration and go on to the next iteration. So let's see an example. Over here, I've declared a function to show you an example of continue and break. To start off with here, I have a simple for loop that runs from one to five. And inside the for loop, we assign the value of i to the variable x. First, I'm gonna show you an example of continue. So we'll say if i is less than three, then continue. So what this would do here is on each iteration, if i is less than three, then it will skip over to the next iteration so that the code below will not be executed, which means that in this case, x will not be assigned the value of i. So when i is equal to one, the loop will go to the next iteration so that the value of x will still be equal to zero. On the next iteration, i is equal to two and i is less than three and it will skip to the next iteration the value of x will still be equal to zero. On the third iteration, i is equal to three, and i is greater than or equal to three, so x will be assigned three. Next, I'm gonna show you an example of break, and break exits the current loop. So we'll say if i is equal to four, then break. So recall that when i is equal to one or two, then x is equal to zero. And when i is equal to three, then this x gets assigned the value of three. On the next iteration, i is equal to four, so it will break out of the loop, which means that when this for loop exits, the value of x is equal to three. Let's see an example in Remix. So we'll return the value of x. I've recompiled and redeployed the contract. And when we call continue and break, we expect the output to be equal to three. And it is. For the last example, I'm gonna show you an example of how to use pass. The keyword pass is used to declare a function without an implementation. In other words, you declare a function signature, but inside the function body, you don't write a single code and you do that by using the keyword pass. So that's an example. So we'll say external, and we'll name the function blank. And inside the function body, we don't want to put any code, so we'll just say pass. And this is a useful feature when you want to declare a function and then write the implementation later. So those were examples of if else statement for loop break, continue, and pass. Thanks for watching and see you later.